This is Pete Thomas from season two of NBC's The Biggest Loser. I'm giving you an update on week number 14. You'd better do the right thing at the next elimination, boys. That's what I felt like I was going to hear Ron say. You see, there's a little bit of carryover this week from last week's elimination. The blue team and the brown team apparently had some kind of alliance. You know, Ron has got this thing on lock. He's got the old Michigander, Helen, she's over on Jillian's team. His son is over on Jillian's team. And then he's got Bob's former team there on the team with him. And so he's got alliances all over the place. Being the oldest contestant on the show, we're assuming that he's the wisest. And so he's just really working his magic. And he's disappointed that some of his underlings did not follow directions. Anyway, that's really some drama. We'll see how that plays out at the way in because we go from there to a temptation. In the temptation, Allie comes out and announces the biggest temptation in biggest loser history. That's that's mighty big. Thus, we're saying the word big a lot. You know, so anyway, what she lets everyone know is no one will have a vote in this week's elimination except for the one person who finds the golden ticket among all the different food platters. And what's on the food platters? Food! You know, and then there's a couple of extra pieces of gum and who cares about that and the money. It's all about the food. So these contestants, they get a chance to have that magical golden ticket. The only person with a vote at this week's elimination. And lest we forget where we contestants have come from, these contestants, as was I, are experts at getting through a whole bunch of food in a short period of time. And so I don't know if this was filmed in real time, but the whole thing took less than five minutes, you know? And who ends up winning, winning the golden ticket? Laura from the green team. She gets the golden ticket. She's got the vote, which means that her teammate, Tara, is also safe. And then it's going to come down to whoever has the closest relationship with Laura. They will not go home. And so we go through the process this week, and we see... Jillian and Bob come in to all of this mess in the gym. Magically they appear. Magically they appear. And it's just like when you disappoint your parents. Remember when you were young and you disappointed your parents, you did something you shouldn't have done? This is how these contestants feel. Even if the contestants are older than Bob and Jillian, you still like you feel like you've disappointed them. And so Bob and Jillian talk about how they've regressed and how they're doing so poor and how they should not have participated. By the way, the only person that did participate was Kristen. Kudos to her. She says, just takes the high road and says, hey, instead of eating my way through this, I'm just going to burn off the calories and not fall below the yellow line. Good job for Kristen for not participating. And so we see the disappointment on Bob and Jillian. Then they try to work the calories off by teaming together and working the contestants out. That's not going to work too well. There are just too many calories consumed on that particular day. Then we go to the challenge. The challenge is at the Rose Bowl. And at the Rose Bowl, the contestants are going to run stairs up and down many, 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 many stairs. They're going to grab their, their flags representing their own team colors, take those flags to the middle of the field. Whoever does that, the two people that do that and win, get to face off against each other, do the same thing all over again for a trip away to a ranch. Great, great stuff. Who is it going to come down to? What two contestants? Sione is there, and, oh, what a surprise, Tara, foregone conclusion. Tara wins it anyway. That's a wrap. We go to the weigh-in. At the weigh-in, we want to know, how are the Michigan teams doing? Well, Ron comes through. Last week, remember, he struggled last week because he had uh, a bout at the, at the actual hospital where he had, you know, a saltwater IV in him. This time, salt water's all out. Drops a good number. Sun comes through. Drops an okay number. He's not too sure how it'll do, but it ends up causing him to be safe. As well, but our other Michigander, Helen, she drops below the yellow line. So now it's a matter of who's going to fall below with her. Who ends up falling below with her? It's Sione, one of the blue team. I know Ron is just like, Mwah! anyway, it turns out. Laura's got a great connection with Helen. Helen is just taking on the green team as like her children. You know, that's just lovely and beautiful for everyone except for Sione, who ends up having to go home. And so we see him at home. He's, he's back home, and he's now teaching these lessons that he's learned to his family members. His brother's dropped 40 pounds. His sister's dropped 12. We were on a conference call with him today. So check out the blog to listen to some of the notes that I put in about that conversation that we had with him. I expect him to look super svelte and tall when he comes back to the finale, which is, by the way, May 12th. 
So let's challenge ourselves. These contestants are in the final run toward that, toward that uh, finale. Let's challenge ourselves these last four or five weeks before the Biggest Loser finale to do our best, whether it be, you know, I'm going to go to the gym six days a week. I'm going to do this exercise or that six days a week. Maybe I'm not going to eat this one particular thing that I know is a trigger food for me for the next five or six weeks. Let's challenge ourselves as these contestants are challenging themselves. This is Pete Thomas from the Going Gonzo blog. Check us out at winningman.com. Check us out at that mlive.com. Again, remember, there's a winner within you. We'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye.